Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, thank you so much for joining me. I am your host, Mark Goldberg, and this is Mark Vlogs Watches Rebel Stream, Rebel Rebel Stream number 10. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm going to wet the whistle, and then we are going to talk about what's happening tonight and what happened this afternoon. So, um, I think what I'll do is I'll hang on just a couple of quick moments because people will be coming into the live stream room here. If you are not a live stream aficionado, then, uh, and this is posted up to YouTube, then just kind of like advance yourself a little bit ahead. I don't make it a habit to make an entire stream about Archie because there's really not that much to talk about. <clears throat> on the one hand, on the other hand, Archie reached out. We should talk all about that. <clears throat> what's going on mostly in the watch or universe of uh, of watches so of course i i want your watch questions and comments here let me hit the cough button real quick uh the negroni was consumed earlier today i kind of have a one negroni policy so you're catching me on the back end of the negroni so yes we will chit chat about the um we will chit chat about the pontiff um Perth luxury kicking right in. No, <laughs> no dealing with him. <clears throat> but I mean, first I should really tell you about the reach around before we get there. So I've got lots of things to talk about. Rancher says, mother, Rancher, I'm going to have you join me tomorrow. Today, this will be a truncated, abbreviated, shortened, um, um, amput amputated uh, rebel stream, if you will. It's going to kind of be a short one. I think we'll only be here about a half an hour, but hey, it could go a little bit longer. Scott Tarlow is saying, Mark, I'm in wearing my new Peli 39 millimeters. So like you were the first kid on your block, Scott, to run to the AD and say, I want the brand new shiny thing. Except for weirdly the the the, the Pelagos, as they are now calling it. I mean, I've called it the Pelagos all these years, and I'm not going to stop. But, uh, you know, Tudor <clears throat> had kind of a like weird video of this new Peli where they had the guy with a very strange accent calling it the Pelagos. Um, but like his accent on every word was weird. So now I don't really know. Is that how they want to call it? Or was this guy just kind of like excessively accented in uh, some indeterminate Euro thrash way? I don't really know. So who knows? If you know, let me know. But I'm saying Pelagos. Um, but yeah, the 39 millimeter. I'll be honest with you. The best thing about that, the thing that makes me maybe a little jelly is the clasp. You know, because you've got the concealed glide lock-esque clasp. Well, I have sort of like the steampunk, super industrial, spring-loaded clasp. But, you know, my clasp is cool. I, I, I guess I should tell you, I'm talking about the 42 millimeter Pelagos. So bear with me, guys. Uh, I'm going to kind of introduce the people that are in here first, Fistos, and then uh, we'll kind of talk a little bit about watches. And, you know, I will, I will inform you what's going on with the Archibald, you know, Archibald uh, verse. Okay, so Lyndon is first and uh, MV is second. Good evening from Lakeland, Florida. Kevin, I hate you so much right now. I really want to be there. <laughs> I personally, I like Florida a lot. Um, uh, Lakeland, I think is kind of central. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think you're kind of central Florida. I, um, my people have, are a, a branch, a large branch, but the paternal branch of my family has been in south um, south uh, west so has been in southwest Florida for well since the since the mid 1970s. Now uh, you might I'm not sure if you can still hear me. But a phone call interrupted everything that was going on, so I actually don't know where you people are. I've got to find you. Bear with me. Hopefully you can still hear me. Hold on. I'm looking for you now, people. There we go. I don't know if there was an interruption in the flow, you know, or what happened there. So, okay. A phone call came through and yeah, kind of balled everything up. Um, anyway, yeah, I'm like, I'm kind of like a Broward Dade kind of a guy, but my partner prefers California. So who knows what's going to happen in that El Futuro Val and Grey Moon first, Fistos. Well, Val and you are, you are not first this time. However, you always get the first fist and the most respectos, just, you know, simply out of um, 
you know, tradition and your record, which is impeccable. Um, the, uh, Theodopolis Theophysonopolis says, hey, Mark, <laughs> what's your opinion on the two-tone Daytona? And my opinion has changed on that. Um, you know, there was a time when I was like, yeah, you know, pass, hard pass. Just because, um, you know, two-tone is sort of like hated among the collecting community. It was viewed as the alpha cocker, the old dude watch. And I am an old dude, but let me tell you what. If you manage to get your hot little hands, your, your little grubbies on any Daytona today, it's a good thing. Um, they don't make a bad Daytona. They don't make a common Daytona. There is no Daytona, which is easy to acquire. And probably one of the few sort of semi reasonable deals on a Daytona today would be the two-tone modern Daytona. So I, uh, what's my opinion? You have a shot at one, you get one. Uh, Lewis Keeler says, hello, Mark, my first time here. Well, Lewis, I would like to apologize in advance for the indignities that you are about to experience. Uh, it's going to be a, a wild ride. I would like you to strap in. I did not say strap on. There will be no pegging here today. Uh, until we get to talking about the Minotaur, that is. There will be lots of inside jokes and annoying things. So, you know, bear with me. You will get used to all this nonsense in two or three months. <laughs> so stick with me. Uh, Scott's saying the bracelet's a little sharp, and I think he's referring to the Pelagos 39. Interesting that you say so. Um, I've got the Pelagos 42, and the bracelet is not sharp. So a weird... Uh, Mark, send the, the, the link to Jin Tingler. Well, Jin apparently wants to come on the one time that I don't want to have a guest. So no, I'm not doing it. I've begged him. I've pleaded with him. Um, and the answer is no. To, this is about me and the audience tonight. It's going to be truncated. It's going to be short. But we'll, um, you know, I, I do have some announcements to make about the reach around from Archie and my sort of plans on how to deal with, uh, with Rebel Streaming and and, you know, and what's going on and what do I think about this one and that one? But probably watches are, are more important. Oh, dear God, Mark, have you ever heard back from Money Penny? Sadly, no. I have said the same thing over and over again. But unfortunately, I am I'm fairly certain that Money Penny has been stabbed with a poisoned dart in the bottom of an, a sharpened end of an umbrella, which is pretty much how they got... Um, 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 Lenin's second and Trotsky. That's how they got Trotsky in Mexico City. The KGB stabbed them with an umbrella that had a pellet with strontium 3049 in there, and they just basically poisoned them with radioactive poisoning. Um, and I think that that's what happened to Money Penny. Um, or alternatively, hopefully, um, Money Penny is merely kept in a medically induced coma in the basement of Rolex in Geneva. Um, he is chained or she is chained. They are chained. You know, we're going to use the pronoun they. They are chained to a radiator in the basement there at Rolex on a feeding tube and kept alive. You know, that's the best case scenario that we can hope for. However, Money Penny, if you are watching this, dee, 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 please put yourself in communication. Mark Goldberg8 at gmail.com or, um, you know, hey man, feel free to. Uh, feel free to hit me up on Instagram, which is over here. <laughs> and by the way, uh, that's how you can contact me too. Uh, uh, Instagram these days is the preferred method of communication. You got to follow me there on Instagram and then you can DM me questions. Should I sell my 126610LN? That is a 41 millimeter um, Submariner date. And by... Uh, uh, one, two, six, six. Oh, I don't know. What is that? It's a, uh, I don't know. What did you have to tell me what that one is? That's a no date and a speedy instead. The Samaritan bought from the gray market on the waiting list for the seed weller. No, no, you, you, you cannot listen guys. If you buy, well, depends, but the answer probably no. And that is because if you bought that, um, if you bought that sub on the gray market, any time in the last, say, year, you'll have overpaid for it compared to what it's worth now. And I've repeated myself on this point over and over again. It, not that I'm against buying on the gray market. From time to time, I've done it. But you have to be very careful. If you buy on the gray market and, and you say, oh, my watch is worth X, what you don't know is when the gray market buys it back, they're going to discount it by minimum 25%, probably more like 30%. 
So it's a quick way of losing money unless you are willing to buy and hold. So um, do not be trading in and out of watches on the gray market. The only watch that you can get out of really without getting hurt relatively quickly is by flipping something that you bought from the AD. But I don't recommend that because you'll destroy the AD relationship. And the AD is the goose that laid the golden egg. You know, don't harm that relationship. Pippy Pip. Oh, and stay tuned. I'm, we're going to be jumping into the, the pontiff nonsense shortly, the Archie verse. Do you still have your Grand Seiko diver? Do you think it's worth waiting for them to reduce size and alter class, but it's never going to happen? It's never going to happen. And I have it still. It's an okay watch. Um, you know, my recommendation would be buy it used, buy it cheaper. You know, uh, I have the spring drive one. Um, no, I don't think they're going to reduce size. I, I think the diver segment of the Grand Seiko line is the redheaded stepchild. It's the Cinderella that they abuse and beat and they barely feed and they don't really take care of. And it lives on its laurels, which is unfortunate because Grand Seiko has great finishing capabilities, but they certainly have not extended that to the clasp, which is overly thick. Um, that's the problem. Uh, the bracelet is adequate. The clasp is overly thick. The watch is probably a bit large. I think it's 44 millimeters with a lot of empty real estate in the dial. So it's a the movement is cool. Um, the movement is very cool. That spring drive diver movement is cool. The bezel is B. So I'd give the bezel bezel action like a B. I wouldn't give it even a B plus. But yeah, it's, at least it's not a B minus. I would call it an adequate watch. And that's, you know, that is faint praise for like a $5,000 watch. Michael McComb wearing the Rolex OP, waiting on the Oris Big Crown pointer date to be delivered from the UK. So, well, that's a big step down if you ask me, you know, Rolex to Oris. It's better than Seiko. It's worse than Breitling. You know, sorry, that's my opinion right there. I love it. You got me to buy a Glashute CQ. You are welcome. So, uh, but this is the live stream. This is a little different. It's a little wilder. It's a little woolier. A lot of inside crazy jokes, but I'm glad that you're enjoying the CQ. I have the CQ Panorama Date, and um, it's a magnificent watch. It's just overpriced. 12K? It's insane. I'm glad I didn't pay that for it. I, though, did get it from exquisitetimepieces.com. You want to reach out to Nick, fantastic guy terrific you know it is very very nice to buy a watch from a collector nick's a young guy but he knows watches he loves watches he, he's like one of us and exquisite time pieces i think they're a really cool company exquisitetimes.com um, go look them up um they, they do have bricks and mortar in naples florida but they're like an ad for like 50 different um watches so watch brands so do have a look okay Mark, can you convince my wife's father that Rolex is the best watch? He's in denial here. It Look here, I'll, I'll make my pitch, guys. Let's say that the father-in-law is into high horology, which, you know, Peter didn't explain, but let, let's assume high horology. So he's a Moser and C guy. Or maybe he's a Breguet guy because Breguet invented the, you know, the overcoil or whatever the hell it was in 1858 that revolutionized shockproof and, and you know, time, you, you know, timing in watches made them far more accurate, easier to regulate. A huge step forward for its era. And Napoleon wore one. Or maybe he's in uh, one of these other French, French names that hurts your face to say like Vacheron et Constantin. You know, everybody who goes to France wonders why the French are mean, <laughs> and they are. <clears throat> but, you know, guys, it has a lot to do with the language. If you look at the face that they have to make in order to say these words with that accent, they have to make a mean face. And eventually, from making the constant mean face, they just become mean. Vachel et Constantin. Watch this. Look, try and say this one without hurting and contorting. It's painful. To say Aldi Mal, look how my jaw is going back and forth. Aldi, <laughs> to all my French fans out there, really sorry. You know, this is called humor. Okay, it's an American thing. You wouldn't understand. Aldi Mal Pinguet. And then, of course, we have Patek Philippe. 
Um, you know, they certainly have more horology than rolls, but let me tell you something. You know, there is no saying that Aldi Piguet will bail you out of jail on any continent, but there is a saying that Rolex will. You can go into the deepest, darkest Amazon, contact any tribe there, you know, and say a Rolex, and they're going to go, ah, Rolex, you know, go into Africa, go into the, go into Appalachia, Rolex, hey, yeah, Rolex, y'all, Rolex, hell yeah, Rolex. Rolex is known worldwide, you know, as the number one brand of watches. So just for brand recognition alone, Rolex doesn't even hurt your face to say it. And all is a very super robust, heavily marketed, well-known watch made with extreme quality. It is not the best horology. It is the best brand. Those are two different things. And then, of course, um, you know, we have the whole issue of Tudor, which is a little sister. And let me just say... Rolex, number one brand. Um, you know what the number two brand of watches is? It's none of the above that I already tortured my face saying. It is, however, another French brand or a Frenchy name, Franche. However, uh, it is a French brand which trips off the tongue, like Vin Rouge, you know, like red wine. This brand trips off the tongue. It does not hurt your feet. You do not have to contort. Or, or hurt yourself in order to say the name of the number two brand of watches in the entire global universe in terms of brand recognition for quality, design, and excellence in watch and jewelry making. Mon ami, I bring you the brand La Maison de Cartier. Cartier. Look at my face when I say it. Cartier. Now look at my face now. <laughs> Vachelon et Constantin. Aldima Piguet. Batek Philippe, Cartier. <laughs> so let me just tell you people, Cartier, that's the second most. So um, I, whether, you're, uh, whether your father, your wife, whether, you're, whether the father-in-law is going to remain you know, in blissful ignorance or not, I don't know. Honestly, let's be fair about this. He's probably wearing a citizen right now. <laughs> okay. So, all right. But look, let's, let's talk, you know, uh, let's talk a little bit about Archie, Archie's reach around. So Archie reaches out to me today. Uh, but by, by the way, this is a message that I'm sure he sent to like multiple people, um, multiple people. And um, what did it say? Let me just read you the, uh, the the text that I got from him and my response to him, of course, which is funny. And then I'm going to tell you what happens next. Um, so first of all, um, I, I get this message from him earlier today, which says, no matter what happens, I'm flying to America. Well, not if I have anything to say about it. I've actually trained some dogs for uh, ice and uh, hopefully I can get them stopped at the border. <laughs> I will, ch this is Archie now. I will change my schedule to suit my finances if necessary. What finances? You, you don't have any, you don't have a job. And then it says, I don't need to do nothing at the moment. Well, there's some grammar for you. I don't need to do nothing at the moment. Wow. The ball is in Tim's court. And we're going to talk about Tim in a moment. If he does nothing, I fly to San Francisco and plead poverty. So it's entirely possible that Archie will be pooping on the sidewalk along with all the other, you know, homeless that Doc BBW complains about in San Francisco. So that, that was Archie's message to me this morning. And I responded to him with the following message of love and support. Now, you got to remember, guys, I was banned from the Archie show for showing up and unveiling quick fist watch check. Today, I'm wearing one of my favorite tool watches. A marathon GSAR it has tritium tubes, glows all night for like 10 years, probably 12. But I showed up, you know, on Archie's program, donating my time completely free of charge just to, you know, help the, you know, help him out, you know, to support the rancher uh, or uh, <laughs> to support the Minotaur. Sorry, rancher. And uh, I show up with a, with a more popular, a better watch than what he's wearing. I show up with the Tiffany and he gets mad, kicks me off and then takes... $700 to like ban me permanently from his show. So basically I have raised more money for the rancher or for, why do I do that? I've raised more money for Archie than anybody uh, in a long, long time. Um, but Hey, I don't get mad. I get even. And uh, you know, you can kick me off your show once and I'm going to rebel stream at least a hundred times. And this is number 10. Okay. 
So he goes, if, 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 if Tim does nothing, I fly to San Francisco and plead poverty. And so I just responded, you know, in, 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 in the generosity that is me. And I said, I have a kennel reserved for you because, you know, I run a farm and I got a kennel. I'm a dog trainer. I got a, I am a dog trainer and, and also an author. And this is my newest book. You can buy a copy of this on Amazon um, or wherever books are sold or electronically if you're not in the U.S. or North America to support the channel. Anyway, I said, I have a kennel reserved for you, which I thought was kind and generous, especially being, you know, considering that I have donated hundreds of hours of my time to, to that mope and, uh, and, and he raised money for banning me. And, uh, and he said, thank you so much. I appreciate your kindness in this difficult time. And I, I, I sort of detected a note of sarcasm in that. So my response was appreciate you because as we know, Archie appreciates nothing, which is going to bring me to my next point. Archie appreciates nothing. Doesn't matter what you do for him, he will screw you. And I, listen, we know this about him, and it's kind of part of his chubby little charm. So uh, we can't say that we are we are surprised. You just got to know that about Archie. Um, Bear Bear Clooney, uh, Archie is sort of like left hand man right now. People forget this, but you know, Bear is a replacement for John Suckerhorn. Who was Archie's everything? Till Archie screwed him over. So Bear, I mean, it's only a matter of time now. I think you are less sensitive than uh, than John Suckerhorn was, uh, and I think you're more sensible in your relationship with the show. But uh, nonetheless, there is no such thing as loyalty. Archie just likes to have you know somebody telling him what to do and somebody taking the workload off of him because he really doesn't like to have to think of his own stuff. Which brings me to my next point. If you have ever appeared as a regular on The Archie Show, um, I, I would like to invite you um, to contact me either through Instagram or my um, email, which I'm going to put in right here, Mark Goldberg 8. Um, and it's Mark, let's see, Mark Goldberg 8 at gmail.com. And I bear, bear with me, I'm just typing that in right now. Um, and I would like you to contact me. And um, I, and I will I will I will provide you with a YouTube home. Okay. Now we've already had Marcelo here, uh, a former regular on Archie. We have already had, of course, the rancher. But I'm looking for the big guns. I'm looking for guys who have not yet appeared on this rebel stream, but who would like to. And I will protect you. Um, so, oh, and uh, TW, thanks for reaching out. We need to talk. So please contact me through channels that I have mentioned above. Um, there are a couple few people who I would like to have on this Rebel stream. Um, you know, we're not going to talk too much smack about Archie. We're going to talk about watches. That's what we really need to do. So if you have been a guest on Archie, you need to appear on this show where we can always talk about watches. Speaking of watches, um, Q says, what are your thoughts on Cartier? What would you buy? And um, I'll tell you what I have bought and what I, what I would buy in addition to what I already did, I did buy a discontinued Cartier, the Calibre de Diver. Now that came out in two editions, the black and the blue. I have the blue one. It is a magnificent watch. Um, on the one hand, on the other hand, it's kind of an oddball because it's round and it's a diver. But it's a good diver. It's ISO certified, so it's a real diver. Um it has kind of an odd movement in the sense that I think it only has like 48 hours power reserve, but it does it with double barrels. Why would you need double barrel? Meaning, you know, two modules that each contain a hairspring. And supposedly that is so that the watch maintains equilibrium through its entire power reserve and doesn't, doesn't have timing fluctuation. But Rolex is getting 72 hours and so is... So is Tudor. They're getting 72 hours out of a single barrel, you know, without with good amplitude all the way through. So I don't know what that's all about, Cartier. But it's a cool watch. So that's one that's available. And actually, that watch, either in black or blue, Calib de Darver Cartier, cool watch. Um, that's available a bit cheaper now. They they had started to climb up in price, but the black ones I think you can find right now for around five thousand dollars, which I think is a fantastic deal, especially on a bracelet. The blue one came only on a rubber strap, and I really don't like the rubber strap. So, but I like the really blue. I like the blue watch head. 
So, yeah. I think the sweet spot is around five for the black one. Um, and I think the blue one, you're going to pay a little closer to seven. But cool watch. What else? I'm not a big lover of the Santos because that's that's it's square and oblong. You know, it's like this. You know, it's like this this wide and that long. Right. So it's dressy. It's, it's, it's kind of it's a dressier watch. And certainly that's the one that the collectors seem to prefer, although I like the tank a lot better. Now, years ago, Bruce Williams lent me a watch that he later sold. I don't think he still has it, but he lent me the, um, the Santos XL. And it was huge, man. That thing was really way too big. I have got to go to my local AD and try on the medium and the large. And uh, it's probably the medium. And I have a big wrist. But the square watches wear bigger than the round watches. So I think the medium. But on a bracelet. So that was a long answer. But that's what I like. That's what I like. That's what I like. If the if we super chat, does the Minotaur still lose a horn? Absolutely. Each one of your super chats not only demoralizes a Minotaur, but each time you do it, a Minotaur loses a horn. So it's certainly appreciated here. It goes to right to the a dog food fund. Um, Ed, Rancher, answer the question in the comments, but I'm pretty sure that he did. Well, there were people who would disagree with you, but that's okay. I mean, horology to a certain extent is in the eye of the beholder. You know, what can you do? Rancher says they're on the block now. So if you want Rancher's rare birds, contact the rancher. Vechelon is Swiss, not French. But I, I, I'm not saying they're French brands. I'm saying that the brand names are in French. That's all. And as we know, um, in Switzerland, they speak both French and Nazi. <laughs> Sorry, did I just say that? Oh, my God. What watch are you wearing right now? A Lewis Keeler. And um, there was a very super famous dog trainer, Lewis Keeler, named William Keeler, Bill Keeler, who wrote The Keeler Method of Dog Training. Great book back in the 70s. He was the head trainer in the 60s and early 70s for Disney. <laughs> And uh, he wrote a lot of uh, wrote a lot of great books. Okay, so uh, and I'm you know as as a, as a dog book author myself, the art of training your dog available at bookstores and electronically everywhere in the world. You know I'm I'm very respectful of people who actually put on a book. This is the um, the Marathon GSAR. This is built in uh, Fond du Chien, um, uh, Switzerland. Um, is a Swiss made watch. Canadian design and Canadian company. Very cool watch. GSAR, super rough and tough. Got this one's got an ETA movement. I think they now make them with a uh, with a um, with a Salida. Would I ever buy a JLC Reverso? They're not a Reversal. They're a Reverso, and the answer is no. Um, now, don't get me wrong. Jega la culture. That's another one. Jaeger la culture, Jaeger sounds kind of like Jaeger bomb, like Jaeger Meister. A Jaeger Meister Reverso, would I buy one? No. Um, don't get me wrong, it's a pretty cool watch, even though the Minotaur flogged it over, you know, over flogged it for years. You know, remember when all he liked was Speed Man in the Moon, Man in the Moon, Reverso, Bluesy. He had a very, very limited repertoire. He ran out of watch talk, guys, which is kind of why he went to the drama. But, you know, it's all in good fun. I, I, I think we'll all remain friends at the end of the day. But, no, I, I um, don't get me wrong. I respect the horology in JLC, but I, 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 I'm, not, I, I'm not especially into dress watches. And if I'm going to get a dress watch or a dress E watch, it's going to be that Cartier that we spoke about earlier. I guess I'm very snobby about brands. Don't get me wrong. This Maybe there's a bit more horology in JLC, but there's an awful lot of brand heritage in um, an awful lot of brand heritage in, in Cartier, and I'm also attracted. I I don't I don't hide it. I'm attracted to the fact that again, anywhere in the world, you say Cartier, ah Cartier, Cartier. I, I know what these Cartier. Um, 
Jäger Le Coultre? What is Jäger? Jäger Meister? Jäger? Jäger what? Jäger Bomb? Ah, I know Jäger Bomb. That's all, they, that's all they're gonna know. Okay, so, and, and why is that important? Because those of us who collect watches often wanna get into and then eventually out of a watch. And so you kinda gotta stick to stuff that you can sell. If I have made, if I, guys, if I have made mistakes, in watch collecting, it has been by buying toxic sludge that I couldn't later later get rid of. You know, so you got to be got to be a little bit careful about buying stuff that, you know, eventually you can, you know, eventually that you can trade in and out of. Clydesy, I'm running out of steam, um, but I I kind of wanted to join you guys tonight to just let you know a few things. I wanted to let you know that. Uh, that Archie was reaching out to me for help and assistance behind the scenes. Um, I think that's significant because he was paid $700 by somebody to ban me forever for life. Um, what do you want to bet? <laughs> what do you people want to bet? I could weasel my way back onto that show. And whoever paid $700 to get rid of me is going to be pissed. How much you want to bet <laughs> that I could accomplish that fact? What do you think? That's number one. Number two, should I do it? <laughs> and number three, um, if, if, if you have been on or you know anybody, let's say you're not willing to admit you know who you are, you people. You're not willing to admit that you're watching the stream right now or later post it up. Um, uh, but let's just say you know these people. Tell them to reach out to me. I'm not hard to find my... Uh, my um, there's my Instagram. Get a hold of me, people. I want the poor, the unwashed. Uh, you know, I lift my lamp beside the golden door. I am here to help you, uh, you know, maintain on YouTube. And Timmy, I think you could probably use a little bit of promotion on your channel. I'm, I'm here to help. So come on in here and, and talk to me. We'll get you some promotion. Um says, if you had to choose all watches from one watch brand, what would you choose? AP or Patek? I would choose Rolex. Have you not been listening to me? Rolex, you're trying to like force me into like, okay, gun to your head. It's going to be Aldima, Piquet, or Patek Philippe. All right, if it's going to be that, oh, Jesus. No, I'm not doing it. I'm not falling for your rat, your, your, your rat shit trick. No, <laughs> I'm going with Rolex. If I'm going to go with one brand, it's going to be Rolex. And if it's not going to be Rolex, then I'm out of watches. I'll just buy a drawer full of, you know, $1,000 shitters. That's what I'm going to do. In the 90s, my first watch was a Cartier Pasha. For whatever reason, that's well hated, you know. But again, again, you know, Cartier is super well known. Alexander correctly says Rolex. You know, I don't know. Let, let me go back and entertain that real quick. I would probably, I would be torn. And here's how I would be torn. AP being brawnier and maybe slightly more masculine and, and, and tool looking, you know, the Royal Oak, you know, it's a, it's a big brawny watch would attract me a bit more than all those Patek dress watches. But you got to remember AP makes an awful lot of dress watches that I think are just like, you know, kind of stupid. Um, whereas Rolex, man, they just make sports watches and even their dress watches are, they're classic. They call them classic. Their classic watches are robust and waterproof and shockproof and magnetic proof. Oh, I hate that you, you I hate that you're forcing me out of my comfort zone. Um, mm. you know, so I would be attracted towards that on the one hand, on the other hand, the Patek is far more classic than the, uh, than the AP. So I'd probably, I gotta say it'd probably be Patek, but I'd be very resentful. I would end up hating my own collection. Um, Patek is better than VC. Vachelon Constantin and Vachelon Constantin is better than AP. I, I, you know, you could throw them all into a hat. I mean, that's you'll find somebody to argue it a little bit differently. But you know, I, I don't have a dog in that fight. I, I'm not sure I fully, you know, care about all of that. Am I enjoying seeing all the prices for AP and Patek fall from these crazy heights? I don't care. <laughs> I don't care about the prices of brands that I don't collect. So I don't care. Um, I think the better question that you could ask me is how do I feel about the decline, the precipitous decline in Rolex prices? And the answer is I do care. 
I'm kind of glad of it. I mean, look, guys, of course, I got slightly mixed feelings because what's done is it's taken the value of my portfolio of watches, you know, down, which, you know, certainly, you know, I guess on some level decreases my own personal net worth some, but I didn't buy them primarily as investments. The reason that I bought Rolex watches is because I like them, really like them. And there's not a single Rolex that I have bought that I can't sell and get out every penny I put into it, maybe, and some of them a profit on top of it. You got to be careful how you buy this stuff, guys. So I think that's the bigger, that's the bigger issue. So he says, it's not a rat shit treat, cheap trick. <laughs> AP for me, since I'm a deep sea dweller. Well, if you're a deep sea dweller, then get yourself a Rolex deep sea. Get the James Cameron UMQ. What is wrong with you? Or the sea dweller. You know, the 42 millimeter red line sea dweller or the James Cameron. I've got both. <laughs> That's what I don't have a single AP, but I got every Rolex diver made, you know. Do I notice a personality difference in male versus female dogs? You know, a little but a little. And this is not a universal truth, but. And this, this may, this may, this is probably a cross species truism though. Um, on in balance, there's always exceptions to the rule, but on balance, I think the female dogs are a little bit smarter than the male dogs and sometimes a little bit more strategic in their thinking. So I feel like the male dogs may just be sometimes a bit easier to train because <laughs> they're dumber. And they can't think of as many ways out, you know, how to get out of a thing. And I'll just give you a quick, small representative example. Years ago, I, um, I had a client and she had um, two Labradors, male and female. And these dogs were eating off the counters a lot. Um, and especially at night. So um, we trained the dogs, but the problem continued. So this was back in the day before iPhones and, you know, easy video cameras and all that cool stuff. So, but I had some very expensive equipment to, for this kind of a scenario. <clears throat> and what I had was I had closed circuit television cameras, right? So I gave her the camera to just like plop onto her kitchen counter with a plate of cookies right in front of it. She had the monitor up in her bedroom so she could see what was going on. She had an e-collar on the dog so she could push the button just when a dog would, you know. And she woke up in the morning having fallen asleep. Um, the baked cookies were all eaten, um, but so was the camera. <laughs> <coughs> the cookies. The cookies and the camera were all eaten, um, which was kind of a, kind of a, it was a bitch for me because that's that was expensive. But I had a second camera. I told her, you lose another camera. This it's gonna be on you. I said, don't fall asleep, pretend to fall asleep. So, because what she was sure is her husband snored, and she thinks that the dogs waited until they heard snoring. And I'm like, okay. So here's what the camera revealed, you know, cut into the chase. As soon as her husband started snoring up there. The female dog went up and sniffed the plate of baked cookies. Then she went and woke up the male dog and hauled his ass into the kitchen. And she went like this, like, you know, get them. And he was like, no, no, I'm going to get in trouble. You could see he was kind of reluctant to do it. She like poked him. She was super insistent. And so he brought down the plate of cookies and then she went, Bleh! you know, grouted him, shoved them away and she ate all the cookies. I mean, you got to admire you got to admire the mentality of dogs like, you know, so smart, so funny. But anyway, yeah, <laughs> that's my story. So, um, you know, listen, some people appreciate and I'm one of them uh, appreciate, you know, a devious mind. But some people just want it easy, in which case you might want a boy. I mean, Ashok, I get it. Rolex is awesome. I have many of those, but they have a specific design language and they're very conservative. Outside of Rolex, Omega, I see Breitling provide diversity and more uniqueness. Um, well, uh, no, <laughs> you know, no, you, you were kind of in my, in my vein. I don't even like all those. I like Omega. I like Breitling. I don't care for IWC. Um, but listen, you, you know, there's all kinds of brands to look at. There's uh, what do I got up there? I got Marathon. I have a Cartier. I got to go shoot. I have a Grand Seiko. Um, <clears throat> let me think, let me think, let me think. What else do I got? 
oh my gosh, I've got docs. Uh, there, there's a world of stuff for you to look at in the one, two, three thousand dollar range. You know, I really do not want to buy outside of the top brands. The one exception, man, I, I don't want to buy outside of the top brands at top dollar. The, the big exception was the glass chute, CQ, Panorama, Date. I prefer male dogs, no blood. Well, you know, if you neuter them, you know, spay them, there's no blood. And they pee quicker, you know, maybe yes and no. I got to tell you, a female, a, a, a spayed female dog is going to pee once and she's going to unload. Um, so I'm not so sure I agree with you there. The female dog, may she, maybe she's going to take an extra moment to pick her spot. But a spayed female typically is not marking and a spayed male, you know, often is. So... Limited edition Speedmasters. I don't know much about them. Um, I know like there's some, the Ed White, the Snoopy, you know, are like super collectible, super popular, overpriced. And uh, to be honest with you, I, I think the back of the Snoopy is way cooler than the front and the whole, I understand, I get it. It went to the moon. I get it. It's classic. It's iconic, but it's, it's boring. I've worn it. I've tried it. It's well made. It's an icon. And yet it leaves me cold. You know, there are certain things, you know, like I went to the Louvre. I saw the, I saw the Mona Lisa. Very nice painting. Behind bulletproof glass. By the way, the Mona Lisa is like this big. I mean, she's tiny, you know, and uh, she's behind bulletproof glass because, you know, crazy people attack her. I, I mean, don't get me wrong. Leonardo da Vinci, the, the breadth of that man's work, uh, unbelievable. But the Mona Lisa... I look at it and I go, okay, very nice. You know, I could hang that someplace, but, uh, you know, he's no Renoir. He's no Caravaggio with that painting, but it's like the best painting in the world, the Mona Lisa. Don't ask me why. So that's that's the way the Speedmaster leaves me equally cold. I don't really care. Amit says, collection grown, taste matures, other watch brands. Yeah, which ones? That's great. Just tell us which ones. You cannot, what, I think what you mean is you can't beat Rolex on value retention. I know you can't. And that's important when you're collecting because you're going to cycle in and out of these things. Oh, my God, Alexander, I'm going to write an entire book of dog stories. Don't you worry. Oh, God. Speaking of books, I my, <laughs> you know, I've written two books co-authored two books with my co-authors, The Monks of New Skeet. They are real famous. They are New York Times best-selling authors. So I'm in very, very good company with these people. And, um, and uh, our first book, Let Dogs Be Dogs. Our second one, The Art of Training Your Dog, available wherever books are sold. Get it to support the channel for the dog lover in your life. Our third one, I'm not allowed to tell you the title or the topic of it, but it's something we've been working on it for about two years since right before COVID is when we started working on this book. And then COVID kind of for reasons that I can't talk about. Um, well, I can, I guess. It, it was had to do with pictures and travel. We just couldn't get the pictures, which meant we had to delay publication. But it's cool. It's really cool. And it, I'm finishing it up in the next two weeks after like two and a half, three years of work. Oh my God. So coolio. My Jack Russell Terror, almost a year old, seems to get more hyper as the months go on. And make it stop. Peter, all I gotta say to you is train your dog. And I listen, Jack Russells are cute and clever and smart, but um, sometimes they bite. I'll tell you what. And when they bite, they do bite hard. So, um, but they're incredibly clever dogs. And the problem is if you don't come up with jobs and productive things for them to do, they will come up with their own. And when they do, you won't like it. So I recommend some training for your dog. There, as far, look, as far as I know, there really is no American Akita, Japanese Akita. There are Akita born in Japan, born in America, and theoretically similar bloodlines. So I'm not sure there's this division that you're thinking of quite, but I will tell you, um, the Akita, for, the, for those of you who don't know, it's like a giant Shiba Inu. It's sort of like the German Shepherd of Japan. They look a little like a cross between a, a Husky and a Shiba Inu. Anyway, beautiful dogs. I will say they come in two temperament varieties, soft and hard, and I've seen both. You don't want the hard. So what do I think? Super independent, aloof, uh, overly smart. This is not a breed 
for the novice dog owner. This is like your fifth, sixth dog that you've had, and you're really into dogs. Um, you know, you could get lucky. I've trained a few that were just like soft and sweet and easy and malleable and just pleasers like they were collies, a few, but it's a little bit the exception to the rule. So the value retention part of the equation, the ability and speed to sell it is another part of it. Those go hand in hand, in my personal opinion. I mean, you could sell anything if you were going to like, you know, completely pull your shorts down. Um, so I, I'm, I'm not sure we are disagreeing there, but I think if you can sell it quickly, then it's retaining value that which, and, and it's retaining value and selling quickly because people want it. There's, there's demand for it. Mm -hmm. My Jack bites my wife's feet constantly. Amazing advice. Thank you. Well, for that, you might try a squirt bottle, but the problem is if you just take behavior that you don't like and you squish it and you don't substitute behavior that you do like, ah, the, the problem then becomes, especially with like a jack, you're playing whack-a-mole with the behavior. Every time you squish one, another one pops up. So you got you to gotta do stuff with your dog. We did not rub the mug. We did not invite the rancher. This is going to be a truncated... Um, uh, this is going to be a truncated, abbreviated rebel, rebel stream. I'm going to ask the rancher to come on tomorrow or the day after. I, I want me some rancher. I want him soon. Oh, my God. Have we ever trained a rather high-strung French bulldog? Yes, but um, they can be difficult. They, they can. The French bulldog got a lot of terrier in them. And like the Jack Russell terrier, which is all terrier, terriers can be feisty, smart, high-strung, opinionated, and demanding. Um, clever, affectionate, beautiful. I, I like French bulldogs, but again, they're so cute. They become super popular, but they're not all easy. Some of them are tough little guys. Have I ever trained any dozens and dozens? Yes, I sure have. I like me some boxers too. Although my, um, I'm right. My, my favorite breed these days is the German shepherd. Uh, just, they kind of almost train themselves. Don't get me wrong. If you have a poorly bred shepherd, they become kind of dangerous or, or anxious or high maintenance. But a, a great shepherd is a thing of beauty. You know, it can be tough to pick them out. What I want you to do on your way out the door is I want you to hit the like button. I want to thank you so much for having spent this time with me. We are going to do this again soon. And remember, if you are anywhere in the Archieverse and you would like to spill the tea, you know, give me some inside scoop. Get a hold of me. If you'd like to appear on this stream, I will protect you. I will promote you. Guys. Thank you for joining me. This is Goldberg. Remember, peace out and paint the sky your favorite color. I got to push the button. <laughs> Bye, guys.